After the Hudeline Gigue in the previous video, I thought it might be nice to look at another movement from the same suite. So this is the gavotte and the double that goes with the gavotte, following on from that Gigue. I'm playing from my Dove House edition again. There's a link to the online facsimile below the video. Quite a few things in here. Ornaments, obviously, because we're French, but quite a few moments of deciding about fingering and fingering that is perhaps treble specific in places where on a bass there might not be much choice, but on a treble we've got slightly more options. So there's going to be a few moments of thinking about fingering as we go along. Looking from the top then and just running quickly through what each ornament is and how we're going to approach it. So from the top, mordant, printed note, one wiggle to the note below and back again. Trill that starts on the upper note on the beat. And again, the same thing, upper note on the beat. This little grace note here comes between the beats. When the main melodic notes fall by a third, if you get that little grace note quaver in between, it comes not on the beat, but between the two printed notes that come on the beats that they belong to. So the trill in that second bar starts on the upper note on the beat, the B gets tucked in and the printed main melodic A comes on the second beat with the B just slurred into it before it happens. The trill starts on the upper note on the beat, one mordant, trill, very long trill, we'll talk about this in a minute. upper note. It's got to be an upper note G natural, hasn't it, there? We're definitely in the minor and um, it would sound very strange. After that in the previous bar. So G natural um, in the in the trill and the penultimate bar. Bar five is an inconvenient long trill. It's a good place for talking about, well, two things really. One about the speed at which we play our ornaments. What is risky is if you have a kind of standard trill speed. My trills go at this speed. Whichever finger I'm using, whichever note they're on, that is my trilling speed. Can't go any quicker. I don't really want to go any slower. I have a standard trilling speed. Very, very risky. I think you should have a multiple and variable trilling speed. For reasons like bar five, if you set off at the beginning of this bar, by halfway through it, we are very, very bored and it starts to sound as though your neighbour's alarm clock is going off. So what are we going to do? We're going to sit on the top note for plenty of time. We'll start the trill slowly, we'll speed it up and we'll put the turn on the end. And by the time you've done all of those things and you've done them in a kind of deliberate and measured and well thought out and shaped way, that bar will pass with a really convincing and elegant shape to it. If you just see a trill coming and you wiggle for all your worth for a whole bar, it's not going to have the elegance or the grace that we require. So just see that kind of thing coming. The other thing to think about in there is that um, I'm doing that trill on a fourth finger. Plenty of people wouldn't. Um, and it's not actually necessary, is it? You could arrange for the end of bar four for that trill to then come on a third finger and lots of people would find that very much more comfortable. You find that kind of fingering actually written in quite a lot in the facsimiles. It seems as though diatonic fingering on the treble was a really common thing. I think it's a good idea but I think it's risky to use a fingering purely because you don't like trilling with a four. Because you get to places, if we keep going, after, bar, after that really long trill in bar five. Let's keep going. Now you have no choice. You absolutely have to trill here on a four. And the risk is that if you've spent your entire life organising your fingering so that you never have to trill with a four finger, when you get to places where you have absolutely no choice, this guy has just never learnt to do that sort of thing. And I sort of feel like, as string players, we've only got four fingers. And if you write one of them off because it doesn't work terribly well, then we've only got 
three fingers and that is really not enough for the task in hand. So by all means use diatonic fingering, put your trills on third fingers, fine. Don't do it because you're reluctant or unwilling to use your four. Learn, make him work. Put, do, do the opposite and put as many trills as you can on your fourth finger just to, to make sure that he is up to the task when it gets there. There are quite a few places in here where, where that fingering um, becomes a choice. Do I use a three? Do I use a four? It is entirely up to you. Just choose, choose and do it and write it in. But don't underestimate the use of that fourth finger. And if you never ever train him up, he's never going to be able to do the job when he gets there, is he? Let's play together from the top. Counting in crotchets, nice and steady after two. So, one, two. Five really is long, isn't it, at this speed? I was wishing for a slightly longer bow. Let's do it again, but a tiny bit quicker from the top. Still counting in crotchets for now. One, two. after a bit in there is the first note of bar six. After all this messing about here, it's quite tempting, partly because you've run out of bow and therefore run out of sound, it's quite likely that this is going to come out with a huge whoosh because if this note has died, we're bound to hear this one with much more sound attached. And actually we want the opposite, don't we? This is a much um, more interesting note than the one it resolves onto. So just watch it, the first crotchet, the B at the beginning of bar six, as you prepare for that. Should we go on? I'll just talk through it for a second. So the P and the T, pousse and tire, trill. Between the beats. at the end you're gonna have to stop that one aren't you with a four to put the mordant on the final note i was just very under speed there and really just spelling out the ornaments to make sure that you've spotted them all it's quite an eyeful isn't it there's a lot of information in there between the slurs and the bowing marks and the the crosses and the t's and um, the petite reprise that's marked lots of information to take in so hopefully that was reasonably clear let's just try it together shall we from the double bar after two and we'll stop and think about a few things on the way towards the tip and I think eventually it's going to go quite a bit quicker than this and it needs to be quite a lively dance you can't you can't stick your bow on the string equally can't do that either so enough length of bow to get a decent sound but with a bit of a kick from the finger in the on the hair here just to give us a bit of lift and poise for the dance. Middle section, one, two. Look after that one a bit at the end of this. I think there's a break.
breath in there, isn't there, before we get. Now, I need to finger this, two, three. Two or four left up there. If that is your normal mode of fingering, that won't have taken you by surprise at all. When I read it through, I did that, and then couldn't quite reach the four at the top. So if you're like me and your normal mode of fingering is like it would be on a bass, you might want to just mark that. That is in bar, um, I think it's bar 12. Two on the C sharp. So you've got the four. Plenty of it left for the, for the top A. Now you need a two on the F sharp. This is a G natural. Um, it is in the facsimile. It's not in the Dove House edition. It must be a G natural on the way up there. Now here, I have a three on the F sharp and a two on the C sharp. And then I'm going up the A string. Does that make sense? Bar 15. Three on the F sharp, two on the C sharp. So you've basically bought yourself an extra finger and you're taking those three notes up the A string. So the slur is all on the same string and then you can reach back. Again, I know people who would finger that. Perfectly acceptable fingering. Don't let me put you off from it. Perfectly acceptable diatonic fingering in places like that. Start this trill on the upper notes. Make sure what we hear at the beginning of that chord is the upper note of the trill, so a C sharp against the E at the bottom. And once we've heard it, then you can trill down to the B. This A has to be stopped rather than open string because it's got the mordant on it. Mordant again. Should we play together once more from the middle after two? One, two. second time there's a petite reprise marked back to where this starts so you just go back absolutely in time half a bar on the final minimum and then straight back to the middle of the bar where the petite reprise is marked let's play the whole thing shall we from the top one two
nearly forgot the petite reprise there. Almost slowed down at the end of a second time. There we go then, that's the gavotte. So the double is written just as um, a kind of variation on the same thing. It shouldn't take us quite so long to look at because lots of stuff is going to be the same. So, shall we just dive in after two? One, two. awkwardness in there is in the penultimate bar isn't it where we've got the um, written out triplet on top of this trill just have a quick look at that so we've got um second finger on the e because of the d sharp before it for the mornings start the trill on the upper note crucial that you put a three on the f sharp otherwise you've got nothing left for the trill in the middle of the bar and then when you put the one down for the E at the end of it put it across both strings so that you've got the chord already in place don't play um, the E there and then move it to play the chord you might as well put it all down in one go why don't we just play that bar and um, this kind of steadily let's just try it three four one Two, three, four. That's just going to need a little bit of practice, isn't it? It's quite nippy with this hand. Bowing wise, it's actually not too difficult, is it? It looks as though there are lots of notes in that bar, but the first one's a crotchet. The next one, it's a crotchet. There's lots of stuff happening with your left hand, but bowing wise, it's just another crotchet. And then dotted crotchet, quaver. So don't worry too much about this hand, don't let this hand know that this hand is panicking. Just keep the bow moving. Don't let it, um, don't hear yourself thinking with your right hand. Good, let's do that again from the top after two, from the beginning. One, two. Starting with a B, push bow, pussy. Shall we just stop there a second? Because there's a couple of things to think about in here and I'll forget what they are if we don't do it now. From the beginning of that second section, First thing to think about is just using the slurred pairs of quavers to spell out your phrasing. So um, that kind of thing falling away at the end of the phrase and then there, here, loads of bow as we get high. run out of fingers here. This is bar 10, 11, 12, 13. Has to have a two at the beginning, I think, otherwise you're not going to reach the A at the top. Advanced preparation. Yeah, let's just do that much together, shall we, from the double bar. After two. One, two. quite a handful isn't it from the petite reprise it's just a decoration of what we had before 
and the fingering is the same in here you need a two on the C sharp so you can go up the A string this has a trill at the beginning and then just a decoration but it looks as though that's just going to be a rising scale but the trill needs to start on the top D so just look really carefully at how many notes there are in that bar B to D and then we've seen this before why don't we go from where the petite reprise starts up there second finger on the F sharp one two elegant pretty frilly stuff isn't it but it's just a little bit nippy for this hand so just spend some time working it out but again with a bow just be really sure that what you're actually doing bowing wise in there is just playing minims and that is not difficult for this hand so keep the sound keep the sound flowing really freely and then this hand can do its knitting in between times if you're too careful then you compromise the sound from both hands point of view keep this one just moving all the time shall we do the whole double and then i'll play you a bass part for the whole lot together from the beginning both repeats one two for a bass part then here it comes both repeats in the gavotte and the petite reprise straight into the double both repeats in that and the petite reprise as well nice sensible speed to start with after two one two <laughs>
should go a bit quicker, I think. It's in two, isn't it? So we've been counting crotches, but really we should be counting in minims and feeling two beats in a bar. So let's do it a bit quicker and I'll count you a bar and a half in and we'll try and feel this in a minim pulse. Here we go. One, two, one, two, one. Thank you. 